What's up, Tech Herders? Coming to you this Saturday with a cool project for a Raspberry Pi 4. Are you like me? Are you a budding home labber? Maybe you got into Proxmox and then you even got a little fancy and set up a Proxmox cluster with two nodes. Well, that's really cool. It allows you to move the VMs or containers around. It allows you to run different VMs on different nodes. However, if one of those nodes fails and the entire system reboots, some of your VMs cannot even load because there's no quorum node. What's a quorum node? Well, I don't know. A quorum node makes sure your Proxmox cluster always has one node to talk to, regardless if one fails or not. So we're going to install Proxmox on a Raspberry Pi and set it up as our quorum node, and then we'll have three Proxmox nodes. Let's jump on the computer and get started, and I'll show you how to create a Raspberry Pi Proxmox quorum server or node super easy. Let's go! Okay guys, so the first thing that we're gonna do is burn an SD card so that we can insert Raspberry Pi OS Lite into our Raspberry Pi 4. I'm gonna highly suggest that you use the Raspberry Pi Imager software. It just makes this so much easier. So first, we'll choose our device, and I'm gonna be using a Raspberry Pi 4. You could use a Raspberry Pi 5, but I'm gonna use the 4. We're going to choose the operating software, and we do not want the full graphical install. So let's scroll down a little bit to Raspberry Pi OS Other, and we're gonna pick Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit, and that's gonna be a Debian bookworm variant. After that, we'll choose our storage. You could run this on a 16 gigabit SD card, maybe even an 8 gigabit SD card, but I have a 64 gigabit SD card inserted, so I'll select that. Now let's select next. What we want to do here is we're going to set up this OS before we ever insert the card. So let's edit settings, and I'm going to say no. Um, we're going to connect this to Ethernet. Now if you were going to connect wirelessly or through the Wi-Fi modem, you could do that, but I'm going to select no. For our host name, let's name it PVE, and I'll put a capital X. In my Proxmox cluster, I have two nodes, PVE and PVE2. So I would name this PVE3. And you know, if you had four nodes in your Proxmox already, edit, then you wouldn't need a quorum node. But I'm gonna leave mine as X, because I've actually already created my PVE3 Raspberry Pi node. But anyway, we will set up a username and password I'm going to call it TechHeart, but normally I use another username, and that's what I use to SSH in to all my Proxmox nodes. So let's just set this up, and you can enter a password. I'll enter password for now. As stated, we're not going to configure the wireless LAN. We don't want that. We will set our locale settings. Select yours, and we'll go over to services. We're going to enable SSH, and we won't select our public key because I want to turn off all the password uh, options later. I'll show you how to do that. And in the options, sorry, Raspberry Pi imager, but I like to turn off telemetry. So let's save all that, and then we'll apply the OS customization settings. Again, no. And we can burn that SD card. So I'll get right back with you when it's done. Bada boom. Okay, and you come back and there's a successful write, so we can press continue. Okay, and so we can close the imager down. So now, before we plug in our Raspberry Pi, let's open up a terminal window. We'll move this one to the left. We'll run an nmap-sn, and then whatever your first part of your IP range is, you know, it could be 127.0.0.x, but mine is 10.0.0.x, and then put a zero to start at the beginning of the range, and we're gonna scan that before we plug the Raspberry Pi in. Should just take about 10 to 20 seconds. There's our IPs. Now you can go plug in the Raspberry Pi with the SD card we just burned. I'm gonna open this window bigger, just so we can see it. I'll drag it over there. We'll open up another terminal. And I'll do the same with this. Now you're gonna wait, I don't know, two minutes for the Raspberry Pi to fully boot. And I'm gonna share with you a little after edit funny thing. I plugged my Raspberry Pi in without connecting the ethernet. So remember, we didn't turn on Wi-Fi. Make sure you've plugged your Raspberry Pi into ethernet or this test won't work. Don't be a dummy. Okay, enough time has passed. Let's run a new scan. And yeah, I see 28 hosts instead of 27. So now I'll just go through and I'll just check on the other side. One, two, 11, look at that. 12 is a possibility. 
So we'll SSH in with our username at 10.0.0.12. And there we are. We can see we're logged in as TechHeart at PVEX. So the first thing we'll always do is a sudo apt update and a sudo apt upgrade just to get the system all updated. We'll let that finish up. Boom! The next thing that we'll do is let's make SSH safe. Most of you probably know how to do this already, but go into a terminal on any computer that you want to be able to access this Proxmox Quorum node, and you'll cat your .ssh slash idrsa.public file. So uh, you'll copy that. If you don't have idrsa.pub or other public key, you can use ssh-keygen. And you'll press enter here, and you can just press enter all the way through, and that will create a public SSH key for you. So anyway, copy that and go back over here. We'll shut it down. We'll go back over here on the PVE3 or PVEX. We will make the directory .ssh, and then we'll edit. Oh, I don't have Vim installed. I'll just use nano. Authorized underscore keys. I'll give it a little comment. Anything that starts with a number sign is commented out. And this is my iMac, and I always put the date. And we'll paste that key in here. And we'll save the file. I'll clear the screen. And now we're going to edit the SSH config files. So you'll have to do a sudo, and we're going to edit, etc. SSH, sshd underscore config. And let's just walk through this, and we're going to look for a few things. I'm going to page down. We'll go to permit root login, and I'll unhash that. And I'm going to say no, because I never want the root user to log in over SSH. We'll go down a little more. Let's remove password authentication. We want to be no. No password. You can't type a password to get into this server. We'll also uncomment permit empty passwords, even though it's a moot point. And that should have us done. Let's save that file. Let's do a sudo systemctl restart sshd. And then we'll exit out of the SSH. And let's re-SSH in. And we shouldn't have to use a password. So there we go. Our SSH is a little bit more secure. We're going to need to install the curl application. So sudo apt install curl. To start creating this static IP address, let's do an IPR, and we're going to grep default. So with the output of this command, you can see a few things. Here's our IP address, 10.0012. This is our gateway, 10.0.0.1. Let's do another thing. We're going to cat slash et cetera slash resolve. You're going to look for your name servers, your IPv4 ones. So, you know, like four dots, x.x.x.x. Dot, dot, x dot, x dot, x. Mine is 75, 75, 75, 75 and then 75, 75, 76, 76. So you're going to remember your name servers, your gateway, and your IP number. And we're going to run a sudo nmtui. We need sudo because we're going to edit the connections. So let's go in there and select edit a connection. If you're running wireless, you'd select your wireless connection. But I will edit my wired. We're going to go down here to IPv4 config and move that down to manual. Go to the right and select show. And here we go. We'll add an address which is our IP that we just saw from the last command, 10.0.0.12. And our gateway, which is .1. For our DNS servers, mine were 75, 75, 75, 75, and that. You can also use 8.8.8.8 or 1.1.1.1 if that's what your setup uses. So then go down and save this connection by selecting OK, and you can back out. Let me just run an IPA, and you'll see down here my IP address will always be 10.0012. So Bob's your uncle, baby. Now let's edit the host file. sudo your edit command, nano, etc. Hosts. And you see down here on your host name, it's 127.011. We're going to change that to 
your IP address that we just set up statically. So 10.0.0.12 and save that file. Let's also set a root password. So you'll do sudo passwd root and just give it a good password. Now I'm going to clear the screen and I'll have to post this command on screen for you. But we're going to add a GPG key. I copied it so we have to get rid of that text there. So you're going to do a curl L and you're going to add the GPG key for the Proxmox ports version of Proxmox, which is ARM. So you let that go and now we can actually add the repository and I'll also post this command on screen somewhere. So you're going to run echo and all that. Boom. And now to test, we'll do a sudo apt update to see if we have the Proxmox ports repos installed correctly, which we do. There was no errors. So we're getting ready to install Proxmox, baby. The first thing we'll install is Proxmox uses if up down to for networking. So we'll add that. Oops, need to install it there. You'll let that go. And then to actually install Proxmox, we'll run an apt install Proxmox VE postfix open dash SCSI and a few other things. PVE EDK2 firmware for ARM. This one will take a while. So dig in and I'll catch you on the flip. Boop. Now this might pop up for you, the postfix configuration. Just select OK and we're going to go down to local only. General mail configuration type local only. And if you don't know what mail name is, you can just leave your host name. And then allow that to finish up, baby. When this pops up, I select no because we add that GPG key, we're okay. Don't forget, you can always find all of these commands that were used in the description of the video. So just go down there and check it out and you should have no problems. Copy paste, baby. Okay, so we're done. I'm gonna clear it and we can run a host name dash I to see that we're still on 10.0012. So that'll be our web GUI address. Let's do a DF dash H just to see, this installation used 4.1 gigabits. So we're not gonna be adding any VMs on here or whatnot, but you could probably get away with an eight gigabyte card. So what we wanna do before we access the web GUI, we'll exit out of our PVE quorum node. And now let's SSH into both of the user accounts of our other Proxmox nodes. My main one is 252. Now I've already done this, but you can make a directory, I name mine, et cetera, PVE backup, and then today's date. And then I'll just do a sudo cp-r, et cetera, PVE to that, that backup folder we just created. This will just create a physical backup of that PVE directory. I know that Proxmox does throw backups in var lib somewhere, but I literally like to do that. So SSH into both of your other Proxmox nodes and just make a backup of etc. PVE. They're both the same, but I just like to have them. Now we can load up a web browser. I'll throw that over here. And we're going to go to HTTPS, our IP address, colon 8006. Just like your other Proxmox nodes. And we'll log in with root. And there we go. One thing that I think is a must is let's search for Proxmox helper scripts. And these are a collection of PVE helper scripts and they have a post installation script right down here, Proxmox VE post install. Let's copy that command. And you never want to enter that in an SSH window. You literally want to do it in the Proxmox GUI. So we'll just click on PVE X or PVE three and go to the shell. Paste that command, 
And this is going to change all of our repositories and take away the enterprise version, add the community version, and just get a setup. So select yes, and it'll start popping up dialog windows. So we're going to correct the Proxmox VE sources, yes. Disable PVE Enterprise, yes. Enable PVE No Subscription, yes. We'll let it correct Ceph packages, that's fine. We do not want PVE test, or at least I don't. And I do want to disable the subscription nag. Always donate to this project. They're working hard to bring us some of the coolest scripts for Proxmox. Let that run, don't click anywhere else, or it would drop the command, just leave it finish. And I'll let it disable high availability, even though that's probably something we'll wanna mess with in our cluster. I'm not gonna update Proxmox because we just did so, but I will let it reboot. I'll catch you right back here in about a minute, baby. Okay, let's see if we're back online. And here we are. So this is our PVEX Raspberry Pi Quorum node, but it's not connected to our cluster. So we'll open up another browser window and let's navigate to our main cluster. This is the one you already have set up. And so here in mine, you can see I have three nodes. PVE1 and PVE2 are my main servers, and PVE3 is actually another Raspberry Pi 4 that is what this video is about. So this is my quorum node. However, we'll click on Data Center and go to Cluster, see all your cluster information, and you'll click Join Information. You're gonna grab your Join Information. Oh, look at that, there's a Copy Information button. I never knew. So this is all blurred out, but grab your information, Navigate back over to the Raspberry Pi and click its data center and go to cluster. And here we're gonna say join cluster. So we'll paste that information. And if it's all correct, this will pop up and you'll have to enter your root password for that Proxmox node you use to get the information from. If that's all correct, you can just click join your cluster and let this complete. Now I've noticed this the last time. If you see up here, there's a little window that says permission denied, invalid PVE ticket 401. And then if you go to status, it says it's still running. Now, what I've noticed is if I go over to my main cluster that we still have open over here, you can even see the new PVEX node. If you pull up your information up here and we can go to that join cluster command. And if we look at it, it says task okay. Go to status and it stopped okay. So when joining the cluster, it does something to that web GUI of your Raspberry Pi node that kind of borks it. But this command is actually complete. It's just showing a connection error. So we can just close that down. And if you reload your Proxmox Quorum node, it'll again ask you for permission. So it just changed something in there. You can visit the website. Get logged in and Bob's your uncle. You can see all the other nodes in your Proxmox cluster. Just understand that my PVE3 is the PVEX. I'm just gonna remove this, which chuckles should be a fun time. <laughs> have to use some command line tools and removing a node can be a and with that, you now have your Raspberry Pi Quorum node up and running. Even if your main PVE or PVE2 fails, none of the VMs will spin down or stop or not run because there isn't a quorum. You will now always have a quorum because you have a third PVE and that Raspberry Pi just sits there and always is the quorum for your cluster. I hope you guys had fun and liked that. I had a fun time setting it up. And for now, Tech Heart out.